Now, as stacks get deeper, the power of position amplifies. So I, I hinted on it a bit there. We're going to dive a little bit deeper on that. So how position gets amplified as stacks get deeper. So this is a well-known fact among pro players, but not so well-known by new players that um, assuming no rake, money won at poker has to come from people who are losing. And all things being equal, the chips are going to flow to the left. The chips are going to flow to the players who are in position. The chips are going to flow to the players who have more information and get to act last with more information for higher stakes. So first example, we have a player who is going to lose 100 big blinds in a game. And the assumption without factoring position is that all players of equal skill at this nine-handed game are going to split up the money. So if this player, seat one, is going to lose uh, 100 big blinds, then everyone else at the table is going to pick up uh, 12 and a half big blinds. Right? Wrong. Uh, that is not the case. Because when we factor in position, we actually see that um, the player with direct position on the dead money player, the weaker player is going to get the majority of that money in expected value with a significant decrease moving to seat three and then four and five. And I actually didn't even include seats six, seven, and eight because they're far enough away that they aren't going to see much of the profit. Much, most of the profit is going to be acquired by the people who have immediate position on the dead money spot, the mark, whatever you want to call that um, player at the table. And actually seats six, seven, and eight, because they're kind of out of position to the player in seat one, are actually probably going to be leaking some of the money to seat one. Uh, but that would get the chart very complicated. So um, this is kind of the baseline if you have a losing player and everyone else who's equal skill. And then as the skill gap comes into play and it's more significant, the, um, the graphs would change slightly. So these aren't exact numbers, but I feel like the visualization helps to illustrate the concept. And I'm someone who really likes to do both uh, words and numbers as well as images so that both sides of the brain can get activated and help to retain the information. And this is why coming up when I was really playing tons of hands online, millions of hands online, um, we call the seat directly left of the mark, the Jesus seat or the God seat because that's the seat that was going to make the most money. And if I could sit in a game with direct position on the weaker player, I was all about it. And if I was going to have the worst seat relative to the weak player, I wouldn't even sit in the game because I wasn't going to get any of the profit. It was already going to be gone um, by the time I got to act on my hand. So this is why when you have a choice of seat, you want to choose the seat in position on the dead money because that is the seat with the highest expectation. You can do everything else the same, but if you improve your position relative to the weaker players, you will win more money. There is no buts about it. And um, <laughs> I had a funny story um, at Fallsview. I was playing. I, I moved to another two-five table, and there was there was you know a spot in the game, and I learned on the first hand that this guy was less experienced. And we were chatting back and forth, and he's like, "Yeah, I'm going to keep an eye on you. I want to get you." I'm going to get closer to you. So when a seat opened up, there are actually two seats open on my left and right. He moved directly to my right because he wanted to be close to me and keep an eye on me. And I just laughed so hard when he was like, I'm going to get you. I'm coming for you. Sits directly on my right. And I just looked and I said, good luck, brother. I wish you all the best because you're going to need it. And looking at these graphs, just to understand it more, the deeper the stacks would be, the more or the more reloads that the player who is going to donate, you know, 200, 300, 500 big blinds to the game, whatever it is, the more that these bars would stretch out vertically, but the ratios would stay the same. The thing that would adjust the ratios is the skill gap, which we will talk about in the presentation on aggression and betting. All right. So what about adjusting your stacks as the play gets deeper? I'm just going to touch on this briefly because we're very deep into this topic. And um, this is also one that has more to do with selection, which we will cover in the uh, webinar in May. Um, but it's always good to plant a seed. So right now we're going to plant a seed, a money seed. And what do money seeds grow? Let me know in the chat. Okay, so... Dead money, 
could mean lots. Uh, we're going to talk about adjusting to dead money. So this is just ranges pre ante. This is from, um, I believe that I have this in my chapter in Excelling at No Limit Hold'em and in the Cash Game Guide. And it's just one strategy you can use for ranges pre ante. This is not set in stone. Um, the concept is more important than the specific numbers. I didn't use solvers to generate this, so I don't know if it's exact. And it also depends on so many factors what your exact ranges should be. So it's not important to get locked in on the specifics, but just to understand the concept. And when we add dead money, which could be ante in the game, it could be deeper stacks, or it could be a bigger skill gap, which means there's more money up for grabs. I just wrote post ante as an example, it's worth adjusting for. So, um, you know, range one, we have the standard opening strategy, generalized and, and then range two is how I originally thought I would adjust to an ante because this is something that always, you know, I struggled with in tournaments and I wanted to know the answer. I thought, well, if there's 67% more dead money, I should play 67% more hands, right? So I just imp increased my range 67% by all positions. But this is wrong. Why? We talked about it. We touched on it earlier in the presentation. And it's that in early position, the odds of running into a hand and therefore the odds of having to play out of position are still the same when facing eight opponents. They're very high. And so we should be careful. Yet, you know, the odds of getting a raise through when facing only two to four opponents are still quite high. Yes, we're going to run into a hand sometimes, but we're going to get our raise through more often than not. Whereas when we're raising from early position, we are not going to get our raise through more often than not. And so we should be more aggressive in position. So it's correct to adjust our ranges from all position, but only slightly in early position. And once we get to late position, that's when we really want to jack it up. So this is how I adjust my ranges when there is more dead money in the game. I, if you notice compared between the pre ante graph and the ranges post adjusted for position, I am playing more hands from all positions, but the increase in early positions is quite small. 2%, 2%, 3%, 7%. And then when we get to late position, it shoots up. I would actually, you know, going back, I would make this 18% and this 26%. So it really just shoots up near the end, just taking off in the cutoff and button. And you, if you notice, if you count up the numbers, the green and yellow charts are the same total percentage of hands between you know your nine spots on the table. You're playing the same number of hands with these two strategies, but the green chart is not adjusted for position and the yellow chart is heavily adjusted for position. And this is what I talked about before uh, for correct loosening up, for correct lagging it up. This is what my mentor taught me was that you got to respect early position but when it comes to late position, especially when there's dead money up for grabs, you can go crazy. Um, and the reason I did include the small blind is because it's so dependent on the big blind. And, you know, honestly, when the blinds, when both blinds are super tight, you can go even wider. You can open 100% of buttons. You can open 70% of cutoffs, 50% of hijacks and get away with it on certain tables. Um, but you can't get away with opening 50% of hands from under the gun almost no matter what, because when there are eight players left to act, people wake up with hands. So again, the concept is really key to understand here that we can drastically adjust our ranges when we are late position. And we can do that even more when stacks are deeper. Um, so seven years ago or so uh, at the World Series, after the World Series of Poker, uh, I went with Greg Merson to Jacksonville, Florida, where he got invited to play a cash game. And he was playing something big. I think it was either 50, 50 100, 200, or 100, 200, or 400, some huge game in, in, a, in a back room at um, Best Bet Jacksonville. And he was talking about strategy because the game was really deep. And what he told me was that, you know, the three bet ranges drastically changed. So, you know, if, if he was out of position facing, you know, he's in the big blind and, or the small blind, he's facing a button open from a loose player. 
Uh, with 100 big blind stacks, he may 3-bet something like 15% of hands, which is fairly wide. It's pretty much all the Broadway hands um, and a lot of the you know bigger pairs. But if he was 200 big blinds deep, 250, that number might drop to something like 5%. And once they got into the 300, 400, 500 big blind range, he was 3-betting 0%. This is the world champion, millions of cash games played online, Supernova Elite, man knew his strategy. And he's saying, yeah, 300, 400 big blinds deep. I'm not even three betting aces out of position because how much money can I get in preflop? And now I have to play so many streets, huge bets out of position for the rest of the hand. Not a good look. Um, and likewise, to counterbalance this in position as stacks get deeper, we can three bet so much wider. So, for example, if you're, again, taking that loose strategy, um, button versus cutoff, and you want to three bet that loose opener, 15% of hands, because, you know, maybe they're opening 25, 35% of hands, you want to buy the button, you know, protect your position and lock it down for the rest of the hand, you might three bet 15% of hands. Um, but once you get to 200, 250 big blinds, you can up that to 25%, 300 to 500 big blinds, you could go as wide as 35%, maybe even more. And, um, you know, the next year, 2013, I was in Macau with Tony. He was playing cash games to prepare for the one drop, which he ended up winning. And he told me one night he, he went to go play some cash at uh, the win. And he came back 30 minutes later. I'm like, Tony, what are you doing home? So early? like, you just, you just left for your session. He's like, yeah, I had a really bad seat. I was sitting out of position to rage in and he just three bet me every single time I opened every single time I opened and I'm like, well, you know, why don't you just four bet him or, you know, like open fewer hands. And he's like, Ev, when you're playing over 400 big blinds deep out of position, if someone wants to make your life hell by three betting you every hand or flatting you and then, you know, making moves on your post flop, there's not much you can do about it other than change seats. And this is one of the very best players in the world. And he just left the game. He's like, don't have a good seat. Players playing very aggressive against me in position deep stack, nothing I can do about it. And so he quit. And position is that powerful. Because what can you do? Flat out of position? You know, according to Alex Fitzgerald, that's the biggest sucker bet in poker. What's your other option? Four bet, define your range, and still have a massive pot to stack ratio after the flop out of position. Um, there's just not too much you can do, which is why as stacks get deeper, position gets so much more valuable and should be a primary component of your winning poker strategy. So again, uh, position is to poker, what location is to real estate. And just like in real estate, the bigger the investment, which is your stack depth, as in property buy, the more significant it is. Uh, position is an expected value multiplier on whatever amount you are potentially playing for. Okay, so... Coming to the close, how can we get position more often in profit? Uh, first thing to do is grab the best seat on the table. You want to have the tight players on your left because then you can buy the button more often. They're going to be more predictable and you want the loose players on your right so that you can attack their wide ranges more effectively and you know buy the button by three betting those loose players and forcing the players behind you out of the pot next thing to do is follow the game flow notice if people are getting frustrated emotional ready to loosen up and play more hands if they are and they have position on you the natural thing to do is just tighten up and if they aren't continue to play your wide range of hands huge one look left get tells this is the biggest thing i talk about this for probably half an hour in my excelling webinar I did with uh, Jonathan on how I got a life-changing tournament score, my biggest win ever. And it's looking left, getting information, seeing if people are showing intention tells and showing a plan to play a hand. Because if someone's planning to play a hand, you can fold half of the hands you were otherwise going to open because most of those hands won't show a profit once you're going to be out of position. Likewise, if people are showing that they are planning on folding their hands, you can pretend they're not there and know that your odds of having absolute position for the rest of the hand are that much better. 
Likewise, some players will not call big raises. So in close spots where someone might want to play, but they aren't showing they have a super strong hand, you can go ahead and make a 4x or 5x raise to get folds. In deep stack cash games, this works fine. And we will dive deeper to that into the aggression lesson because it's a huge topic and there is a fine art to that bet sizing. And finally, you want to own the metagame because if people don't want to play with you, if you have fear equity over them, if they feel like you hold over them, they will respect your raises and fold to your opens, which is ideal because you will get position more often. Okay. And uh, note a little trick about relative position I mentioned earlier is that you can open limp. It's a very cheap way to get information from the rest of the table. The other option is straddling. And that way when people raise, you'll be last to act. Note, this should only really be done when there is a maniac on the table or you have a tell because the worst thing to do is limp in with the hand you're hoping to raise and having it go six ways to the flop. So really generally don't do it unless you have very strong reason to do so, but it's a strategy you can throw in there to get more relative position. It's kind of like, um, you know, adjusting raise size bigger is how you can get absolute position more often and using the smallest raise size or the limp is a way you can get relative position more often. So in summary, I hope you guys are with me because that was a lot of information. And if it just blew by you, don't worry. There will be a replay. You can watch it again or you can pause the video and play it back. But I'm going to summarize it here so that it will solidify in your minds. And if you've taken notes, congratulations, you get five points. Number one, position is a key element of the triple threat and a winning poker formula. Number two, position gives you the information advantage and the right to last action. Many benefits. Number three, there are two types of position, relative and absolute. Number four, please start thinking of the button as the money chip and you will win more money. Simple as that. Number five, the action and money flows through and two, the player in position. Be the player with the best position and the money is going to flow right to you. Number six, building on number five, if you wanna loosen up your game, exaggerate your position, your adjustments to the in position spots. Don't loosen up from all positions. Loosen up a little bit from early position if you even want to, but loosen up a ton from late position. Open way more hands on the cutoff and button. Three bet people when they're opening, when you have position, and really focus on those late seats where you are almost guaranteed absolute position, and there is a very low chance of you running into a strong hand behind you. Number seven, to play in position more often, look left, get those tells, and adjust your raise sizes pre-flop. If you want to know more about this, I'm happy to talk about this. Uh, live tells and relational dynamics and metagame is one of my favorite things in poker. I absolutely love it. Um, eight, the free card play and the free showdown play are only available in position. And finally, number nine, stack depth is the great amplifier of the power of position. The deeper the stacks, the more valuable position is. The shallower the stacks, the less valuable it is. But it always has value. It always has merits. And it's always better to have position than to not have position. If you're going to play without position, you better have a good reason to, like a good hand, good odds, or a really good read on your opponent.